Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we're going to be talking about one of my favorite web-based game engines slash frameworks out there. It is called Babylon JS. Now, this one is backed by Microsoft. It has an absolute ton of features for it, uh, and we're talking about it today because Babylon JS 8 was just recently released, and you're going to see they do basically one release a year. So Babylon JS is absolutely, again, loaded with features. Some of the new stuff here uh, is really awesome, and just in terms of the features themselves, you get an idea from this list. Uh, so you've got all the rendering stuff you could expect. You've got Havoc, including in this one, you've got a new Havoc-based character controller, ragdoll physics, behaviors, you've got web GPU support, particle systems in there, all the shader graphics functionality you could ever imagine, uh, number of geometry features, tools integrate with pretty much everything you can think of, uh, exporters and tools available there as well. So you have a ton of capabilities out of the box with this one. And as you're going to see some, some of the new features in Babylon JS, it's actually really nice stuff. And some of the stuff we've actually just recently seen released in um, Unreal Engine 5.5, for example. So if you're looking for a very capable open source 3D framework for the web, Babylon JS should be at the top of your list. Uh, basically, there's Babylon JS, Play Canvas, uh, and a few other players in that space. So, uh, as I mentioned earlier on, uh, Babylon JS 7 release was in April, uh, and then the Babylon JS 6 release was in April, uh, and then we also had the Babylon JS 5 release, I think was technically in May. So we generally get about one release a year, and this is the Babylon JS 8 release, and I want to point out something absolutely insane. And this actually is coming from their forums. So I went to their official forum right here, they said Babylon JS 8 is officially here, and then this is the announcement. And this is nuts. I've never seen anything like this because it's hosted on LinkedIn. Like I've heard of people posting to Medium, for example, but LinkedIn, especially when you have your own website, why the hell is this hosted on LinkedIn? So anyways, uh, here we go through the announcement. There is actually a ton new in the Babylon JS release. Some of them we'll go hands on with and show you the demos. One of the really things that shines with Babylon JS, it comes with a ton of demos and an entire uh, playground that you can actually you know go in there, type code and interact with it. Uh, so the new features, we've got IBL shadow. So image-based lighting uh, and shadowing system here. So this is something that was actually just added to Unreal Engine 5.5, for example. And let's go check out the demo for this one. And we got to wait for it because we're hosted on LinkedIn. So here you can see this is the uh, playground. So you can actually come in here and write code. Uh, I do believe there is, yeah, so there is uh, code completion available as well. So you can actually write and live edit your code over here. Uh, you can do it both in JavaScript and TypeScript. You can have it run in WebGPL. If the demo also possibly has WebGPU as well, one of those things about this release that we're also going to find is that uh, Web. Uh, uh, web GPU support has gotten better. So you can see image-based lighting. This background here is being used to light this 3D model. And you get an idea just how uh, profound this actually is. Watch the top of his hat when I switch to a different lighting. So there you can see what the, the dark brown is doing to the top of this leather. So image-based lighting opens up a whole world of possibilities there. Uh, so like so and like so. So huge effects there. Again, I love this um, playground feature. So you can come in and play with any of these new things. So image-based lighting is one of the new features there. Another one that is really cool is area lights. Now, area lights are essentially just uh, 2D, 2D lights. These are just 2D, so look flat 2D images with a light coming off them. Uh, and it, you can use it to create like a diffuse lighting effect. All kinds of lighting effects you'll be able to create with this. And it gives you the ability to create these flat lights in your scene super easily. Again, another cool feature of this release. Uh, then we've got this new node render graph. This is an alpha format only. Uh, so this is a way of, again, don't use it in production, a way of configuring the rendering um, pipeline using this graph node. So the best way I could show you is just a simple example. So let's just move this over here. As you see, you've got options over here so you can zoom things into fit like so, uh, and reset, reorg, and so on. But each one of these nodes has options in it. So for example, this one, see the clear color? I could turn clear color options off like so. But what you would often do is put in say special effects. So when you're rendering, your ultimate result is this frame, this output over here. And let's just do something really simple. We're gonna do chromatic aberration. We will drop this into the source, we'll drop this into the texture, and then boom, you can immediately see the result there. So you now have the ability to configure your graphics rendering pipeline using this flow chart. Again, you see all of the options that are available down here. Uh, so blurring, black and white, 
uh, culling, uh, cameras, and so on, shadow lights, and so on. So you can configure the rendering process using this. Again, this is in alpha format, so you do not use that in production. Uh, we have a new lightweight viewer you can embed on your website. So if you've got like a product you want to demo, uh, super simple way of embedding things to, to demonstrate them. And then here we get into some of the web GPU things. So it's had GPU, web GPU support for ages, but this resulted in GLSL, which is what's used for web GL shading. And then web GPU uses their WGSL. So fortunately now there is a conversion library that's been available. So anyone wanting to target web GPU and Babylon JS can leverage this library to convert Babylon shaders into something web GL can use. Downside is the conversion library is over three megabytes requiring users to to download their double um, double the size potentially from needing that support uh, so all of the shaders as such are now available you can see it in this particular demo now this demo is not it's actually kind of an impressive demo in terms of what it's got but what it does is it showcases so this is using webgl shaders at this point in time i can switch over here to web gpu and then this is backwards to what you think so switch versions uh and then say yes but then it says, confirm switch to WebGPL, cancel to keep WebGPU. We want WebGPU. And then boom, now this rendering is happening using WebGPU. It's using the different shader model and so on. So again, pretty transparent there. Uh, so if you want to use WebGPU, it's a lot easier to support now. And at the same time, uh, why not unlock the ability to create custom WGL shaders using Babylon's Node uh, Material Editor, which by the way, is another tool that is available. Uh, and you can see uh, it's again, just like what we saw for that final rendering, but this is for creating shaders visually. Uh, so you can now create these uh, web GPU shaders here as well. They have done updates to their audio engine. New engine was designed to be powerful, taking advantage of the full suite of web audio features, modern class names and architectures come to, uh, you've come to expect and simple to use. So if you're using audio, new options there, new demo available for that as well. There is a new Gaussian splat support. Uh, so builds on the exciting foundation with some new features such as SPZ and compressed poly formats, spherical harmonics, as well as runtime optimizations. Once again, we can check out a demo of runtime splat viewer over, or Gaussian splat viewer over here. And you can see that is a super high image um, Gaussian splat being rendered and shown. So um, Gaussian splats are really cool. It's a way to scan the real world. Uh, but at the same time, somewhat limited in their use in the world of game development, at least at this point in time. And once again, you can see here is the uh, extent of code required to display a Gaussian splat, by the way, which is very, very small. Uh, and then we've got uh, Havoc. So Havoc was added in Babylon 7, I think it was. Uh, so in 8, they've got um, continuing amazing partnership because basically Microsoft owned Havoc and Microsoft are the primary developers behind Babylon JS. So this does make sense. Fully featured character controller into Babylon JS, state of the art character controller to your toolbox, allowing you to start making your very own character centered games with just a few lines of code. Again, we have a demo of it right here. Uh, so this is being controlled by um, the Havoc's physics controller. So I don't, I don't know what we can do in terms of, yeah, there you go. So this is now available if you want to create a physically based game. The options are there for you with this new character controller. Again, you can see an idea of the code required to handle it available over here. Now, I think I, oh no, let's close it down. All right, so that is new there. And then on top of that, we've got smart filters. So this is for anything 2D. If it's a 2D visual effect, this is the tool for you. Under the hood, it leverages shaders in the games where you uh, expect any GPU-based tools to do, but it focuses on helping you create elaborate 2D visual treats for web experiences. So again, another visual system for creating shaders. This is again for uh, video effects, texture treatments, post-processing, you name it. If it's 2D, you can do it that way. Uh, Java Babylon JS 8 continues to improve the uh, visual realism, level up the environment lighting to look closer and closer to real time ray trace results uh, available there. And then we've got uh, node geometry editor was updated as well. This is a way of uh, using these node graphs here. So it's kind of like um, the Oh, what the hell is it called in Blender? Geometry nodes. Uh, but you've got this new node geometry editor. So if you want to go ahead, you can check it out in a demo there as well. And LinkedIn. So once again, I have to click to open it because of course I do. So you can see it's a way of creating geometry visually. I don't know what I just did. Um, here, let me, let me zoom to fit. Maybe I'll get that back. Ooh, okay, that's what I did. So you can see this is being created over here. This uh, pirate ship here uh, is being created 
using this absolutely insane node network. Now, I don't know why you would want to do this as opposed to just model it or whatever, but as you can see, a very strong um, visual, like very complex too. There's a lot of nodes here for it for creating uh, geometry networks, but this is just ginormous. So let's uh, shut that one down and head on back over. And then we've got uh, node material editor bug node it makes incredibly uh, simple to create visual shaders without writing any code. It introduces some new features as well as the new incredibly useful visual debug node. This node allows you to see the visual output at any point in your node tree. So you can drop it in, see it like there, and it will show you the rendering to that point in time. Uh, and Booleans were improved. They're using Manifold JS library for doing so. So you can see the various different Booleans that can be created there. Uh, updated GLTF8 support with new extensions. Uh, and then we've got uh, G GLTF exporter improvements as well. So you can export your level out to GLTF. Then you could use them in Blender or another game engine if you wish that has GLTF support. Uh, new loader options there as well. Uh, IES lighting support. Uh, USDZ support as well. GPU mesh picking. GPU bounding box, EXR texture support, WebXR depth sensing, and then we've got other features in development, including PBR support, GLTF interactivity support, uh, more tooling and better tooling. And yeah, that is this release. As you can see, there is an absolute ton in this release. And for some reason, again, the release notes are hosted up on LinkedIn. So if you're interested, Babylon JS is an open source project. Uh, it is under the Apache 2 license, which is a very liberal license in terms of what it enables you to do. If you like it, give them a star. The release just happened. So we've got an updated version of it. Um, so this will probably go out tomorrow. So uh, yesterday at this point in time, this release itself came a couple days ago. I think it was March uh, let's see, 8.0 was released on like last week. So it's been a little bit of time since 8.0 was released. And as you can see, we've already had um, three point releases since then. So it's a very active project, uh, a lot of people behind it. So if you're interested in learning more about it, it is available at babylonjs.com uh, in terms of the website. Once again, they have a number of these really cool tools. Again, the, the node material editor for doing uh, your shaders, visually creating shaders. And then we have this sandbox environment, which enables you to basically can just drop an element in here. And then of course we have the playground. Where you're gonna to wanna to probably do is start with the playground. So coming into the playground, click this little icon over here, and you're gonna find an absolute ton of examples to get you up and started. And then you can basically just jump in and uh, get an idea of what this thing is capable of. So you get an idea. This is a really cool example. It shows you uh, like a, an ocean environment. Everything here can be set up so we can change the, the setting of the sign, we change the gravity of the waves, the depth, and so on. So it gives you a complete playground. You can see all of the code over here. By the way, you can also switch over to JavaScript if you prefer. Uh, but then, unfortunately, you got to come back and pick the sample again if you toggle that. But it gives you an idea. Uh, of the capabilities of this engine. You come into the playground, learn just about anything, a ton of samples available here to learn from. And this is a very feature rich framework. And I gotta say, there's a lot of new features in this Babylon JS 8 release. And I'm curious, what do you think? Have you ever checked this one out? If so, what did you think of it? Let me know in the comments down below. I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.